Hello, welcome to King Info. Today, we are going to talk about the world's biggest guns, Schwerer Gusta. The Nazis under Hitler developed a number of crazy weapons. Some, like the V-1 and V-2 missiles were harbingers of the future. Others, like the enormous battleships Bismarck and Tirpitz, were the zenith of a soon obsolete weapons systems. A few like the Rat, a tank the size of a small office building, turned out to be just impossible fantasy. One that was actually built, however, almost defies belief. It's the Schwerer Gustav gun, the biggest cannon ever used in combat. In the 1930s as Hitler eyed up an eventual invasion of France, he saw a problem. The French had constructed a massive set of defensive forts along their border with Germany. Called the Maginot Line after the French Minister of War André Maginot, it was a series of concrete fortifications, obstacles and weapon installations stretching along the frontier with Switzerland, Germany and Luxembourg. These fortifications were impervious to anything the Germans had at the time. Hitler went to munitions maker Krupp asking them to resolve this problem. Whatever the solution was would require a weapon that was able to punch through 7 meters of reinforced concrete or 1 meter of steel armor plate. Krupp's answer was an enormous railway gun. To have the kind of power needed, the cannon would have to be gigantic. With a barrel with an inside diameter of 31 half inches and a length of 107 feet it was far larger than even those found on the battleships of the day. A single shell for this gun alone would weigh 7 tons and the gun itself over 130 tons. The high explosive version of the shell would create a create a crater in the ground 30 feet wide and 30 feet deep. With the ability to fire around almost 30 miles it could keep safely out of range of any retaliating artillery. Construction Plans were completed for the weapon in early 1937 and fabrication started in the middle of the year. Like other large guns of that era, it was planned that Schwer Gustav was to be a railway gun. Using the railroad was an obvious way to transport very heavy weapons systems in that era, though it limited the device to only places where a railroad line existed or could be built. While most railway guns of that era could be operational after just a few hours, Schwer Gustav was so large that it needed not just one track but two parallel tracks laid side by side at a specific distance. This meant before the gun could be used it had to be transported to the location pulled by a regular 25-car train, then assembled and placed onto a set of specially prepared parallel tracks. The assembly operation, not including the time to lay the special track, could take three days and involved laying another set of parallel tracks on either side of the two for Gustav to support a pair of cranes. It took 250 people to run the gun and over another 1,000 to support it. Schwerer Gustav was ready for combat by 1941, but by then the original reason for its construction no longer existed. Germany invaded France in 1940 by simply going around to the Maginot Line to the north rendering the complicated set of defenses useless. The Sage of Sevastopol It was until early 1942 that Gustav found a target. In June of 1941 the Germans launched Operation Barbaros, the invasion of the Soviet Union. By February of the next year the Germans were laying siege to the city of Sevastopol in the Crimea and decided to bring the big gun to their eastern front. The Soviet naval base at Sevastopol was one of the strongest fortifications in the world at the time. It was located on a high cliffs overlooking Severnaya Bay, and the natural lay of the land made approach from any direction difficult. To further strengthen the defense, the Soviet had built a series of reinforced concrete forts around it and mounted old battleship guns in them. The Soviet forces at Sevastopol were proving to be a major headache for the Germans. Air raids launched from there and the rest of Crimea were taking a toll on the German-controlled oil fields in Romania vital to the German war effort, so Hitler ordered that the area be seized and put under German control. To get Gustav close enough to be of use the Germans laid a 10-mile spur line from the main railroad to where they planned to place the gun. At that location they constructed a set of curved double tracks on which the gun could be assembled. Schwerer Gustav, like many large railway guns, could only be raised and lowered in elevation, but not turned to the left or the right. To aim these type of railway guns it was necessary to find or build a curved section of track. The barrel could then be aimed by moving the gun back and forth along the curve until it was pointed at the target. On the 5th of June, 1942, the gun first spoke in anger. Eight shells were fired at a set of costal guns and another six at Fort Stalin. The next day seven more shells were fired at Fort Molotov. Then Gustav took on one of its most difficult targets, an undersea ammunition magazine located beneath the bay. Despite the magazine being almost 100 feet under the seafloor and protected by 30 feet of concrete, Gustav fired nine shells into it destroying it utterly. Over the next few weeks the heavy gun would fire 17 addition shells during the siege. On July 4 the remaining Soviet forces surrendered, and the Germans took control of the city and what was left of the military installations. 
The End of the Big Guns In April of 1945 the Germans decided to destroy the cannon to avoid it being captured by Allied troops. The Russians took an interest in the remains and had it shipped to Demersburg for study. As impressive as big guns were, they were totally impractical given the difficulty of moving and emplacing them. Given their great size they were also easily seen from the air, and therefore subject to attack from aircraft. Their bulk also meant that they could not be hidden easily in a convenient tunnel-like smaller railway gun. 